Welcome to Dublin for the 2018 Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. We're here at Ireland's leading gaming venue, the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club, for a true extravaganza of poker. This year's festival is going to be the most exciting to date, as we have a truly international field of highly skilled players. Let's find out if this year's winner will be from Ireland or another great poker playing nation. We have 223 registered players attempting to take home their share of the €90,000 prize pool. Our winner, however, is going to be walking away with €25,000 in cold hard cash. This year, we have regular poker pros, some recreational players and some celebrity figures who are here to enjoy the unique nature and excitement of the Fitzwilliam Poker Festival. Day one action was fast and furious, with the field being cut from 223 players down to just 55 qualifiers. Unfortunately, we lost some high profile players and some well-known members of the club on the very first day. Day two saw the field cut from 55 players down to our nine finalists, who are about to compete at the final table for the top prize money. The final 22 players were in the money, so a huge big congratulations to all the money winners at this year's festival. Our unlucky 10th place finisher was Louis Schneider, who unfortunately ran kings into aces and just missed out on the TV table. After three days of exhilarating poker, we're down to our final table. Nine players will battle it out for the top prize and this prestigious Champions Trophy. Who will hold their nerve and who's going to crumble? Let's get the cards in the air and find out. Let's meet our final nine players. In seat number one, we have Stefan Perch from France, whose highest cash earning was here in the Fitzwilliam earlier this year when he took home 5,000 euro at the end of the month tournament. In seat number two, we have Alan Tang, who's a regular player here in the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club. His favorite player is Daniel Negrano. In seat number three, we have Stephen Lyons, whose biggest cash earnings was 7,000 euro here at the Fitz in the Masters last year. Seamus Cahill is in seat number four. He's chip leader going into the final table. Seamus is also no stranger to large tournaments, having won 395,000 at the World Series in 2015. Colm Chan is in seat number five. Colm is a secondary school teacher from Kildare. His pet peeves are unnecessary talking and slow play. In seat number six, we have Pablo Valena, a nurse from Spain. His highest cash earnings was here at the Fitz playing the Cash League last month. In seat number seven, we have Ronan Madden, a quantity surveyor from Galway. Ronan was short stack going into the final table, so we're hoping Lady Luck is on his side this evening. In seat number eight, we have Nick Chen Jing, another regular player here at the Fitz. Nick has just under two million in chips going into the final table, making him currently second in chips. In seat number nine, we have Patrick Clark, a professional poker player and previous Irish Open winner. Patrick is one of the favourites to win this evening, so we'll be keeping a very close eye on him. Cards in the air for this thrilling final table. And I'm also thrilled to be joined by the newest member of the Fitzwilliam Poker Hall of Fame, Park Parkinson. Congratulations, Park. Thanks very much, Jesse. I'll take congratulations for anything these days. <laughs> <laughs> you actually got into the Poker Hall of Fame that fits by merit. You won uh, the Masters Championship in oh. June. Yeah, we're uh, still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously the winner here will also get enshrined in that uh, Fitzwilliam Hall of Fame. Uh, Andy Black, one of the names on that. Um, well, the two main contenders here would be Patrick Clark, I think, and of course... Uh, Oh. Seamus Cahill, who's a big chip leader, they're, big, they're the two big money winners, the two big name pros against uh, the club players. It's the normal dynamic, which is what makes this tournament so exciting. Yeah, I mean, Paddy Clark has a huge resume. Oh. He's an Irish Open winner. And, of course, Seamus Cahill uh, had a huge oh. result, the WSOP, a couple of years ago. I think second in uh, in one of the big events there for almost 400,000. Yeah, I think, I think it was uh, a 3,000 uh, No Limit Hold'em. Oh my God! With, with the raise on the button and set. holy, what a flop set over set, Parg. This this hand starting fireworks straight away. Oh, this is Paddy Clark, no ha ha. <laughs> no ha ha ha. He's uh, he is gonna be gulping. Okay. Uh, I would imagine Seamus Kyle can get out of here, but when Stephen has bet this on the button, 
Oh, this is just a complete trap. There's no way out of this for 86. Patrick Clark. No, he, and it's uh, it's 86,000 to call. Now, he's got 1.2 million back, which Stephen nearly covers. And you think he's going to just check raise here? Obviously, he thinks he has the best hand. Um, with this kind of board park, you might want to try and get the chips in now. Or do you think, actually, he's going to try and slow play it and just call here? Well, there's, there are many ways to skin a cat, as you well know, Jesse. But I think uh, all, this, all the money is going to be going in here one way or the other. It's just a question of uh, how Patrick decides to play it from here. One yeah. thing that never happens Race. in this 25. situation if you're Patty Clark, you're not considering you might be beat. No. And if, if you're going to come in with that kind of an attitude, you might as well stay in bed. But Patrick is coming off a big win in Barcelona a few months ago was one of two Irish players at the final table of the main event there, him and uh, Bucko, who did both did as proud. All in. Raise all in. Yep, so it was Cold. check, raise, uh, re-raise, all in. A shake of the head from Paddy Clark. He sees the absolute worst story possible. He's drawn to one card now, Parg. One lonely four in the deck to yeah. get out of this one. And, and it if, shows you if you're a lip-reading expert, I mean, you might know what he thinks of the chances. <laughs> <laughs> Laurels mean nothing in this game. You can have the Irish oh, Open Championships from here to Tipperary, but that don't beat set over set. I think Patty Clark is left with ashes. Yeah, look, this is a huge pop for Stephen, who's a very popular uh, local club doing? player. But uh, it's a big pot for everybody else at the table because Patrick Clark would have been a guy they'd have been expecting the the fireworks from today. And now he's in huge, huge trouble. They'll just be counting it up here, but great stuff from Stephen Lyons, a taxi driver in Dublin. And he actually, he just played that perfectly, Parg. I mean, nice to flop a set over a set, but he raised small on the button and then just got all the money in on the flop. Thank you, please. And I guess he's massive chip leader here now at this final table. No, I'd say he's probably lying second or third. I think Seamus Cahill's got 2.7 million. Well, I don't know how much Patty Clark still in this, but he will be the short stack right now in this tournament. I think he's got about seven big blinds left. Oh, jeez. Raise all in. Under the gun for Ronin, 85. who's come all in for 285,000. That's Old. about 10 Old. big blinds, I guess, Park. Old. 12, maybe. And all of a sudden, Steven has got plenty of chips Old. to call that. He didn't even he call didn't with call the King Queen. <laughs> I have to say I'd have been tempted there. <laughs> but around to Seamus on the button. And what would you do with the two sixes here? Is it a re-raise situation? It looks like it. Re-raise. 1.2 million. Hold. No surprise to see Seamus being aggressive. That's how they play it in Vegas as well. Oh, show down, please. Not to mention Ireland. He's isolated. Head up like now against the ace jack, and it is Ronan who is on his face, Parg, but looking in good shape to double up here with two pair on the flop. Yeah, I'd like to be on my face like that. <laughs> That's exactly what you want to see when you're in with the ace jack. The black jack on the flippity flop for a double up. Point five. feel like he can now play a little bit. He's a surveyor, Parig. That's very interesting. What, what does a surveyor do? I mean, I, you know, I like to survey the dinner table. I have absolutely <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I'm going to tell somebody I'm a surveyor. <laughs> a surveyor of opportunity. And he's big blind. say if, if you're looking for surveyors uh, the greatest surveyors in poker I mean you know uh, names like Donico D or, or Ben Roberts uh, would, would come up historically they were the greatest surveyors of games they could stand around on the rail for hours surveying a game before finally putting their chips down 
<laughs> There's a pretty good record at it as well. <laughs> oh. oh, here's a chance for Patrick Clark, Queen Jack. That's good enough for his seven big Ray's blinds. A bit unfortunate, he's run into Alan here, who's got ace jack. Alan would be, I, I, I played a little bit of hold'em with Alan. I called him for 50 quid That's and the cash came months before the flop with a pair of jacks and everybody started laughing at me. He, well, you uh, can take it, he's pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess so. He had to think twice with the ace jack. But for Paddy Clark, oh. I mean, the Irish rule of 18, if you've got less oh. than an eight big blinds or less, I would say two face cards was plenty for oh, him. Oh, yeah. And uh, I would say Seamus would call here. He, he called the last hand with the sixes. Race. He's not going to mind one taking on a few million. short stacks with a pair of eights. He's actually yeah. three bred a park to try and isolate oh. again. Didn't work the last time, but he's going for it again. Not with the two sixes this time. Two steps up oh. with the two eights. And he could have a chance about taking two guys out here. Yeah, all the other guys at the table will be rooting for him, that's for sure. Awesome. For Alan Tang, a fits You know, regular. every time somebody gets knocked out, everybody at the table benefits. Yeah. They move up another place in the prize money. And for a lot of these guys, apart from Patrick Clark and Seamus, none of these guys has ever won a five-figure uh, sum before. So, I mean... A top you know, three spot in this tournament would be pretty um, much oh, nearly everybody's uh, biggest cash ever. Yeah, apart from the two pros, absolutely. So it is going to be three ways for five tickets of fate for Patty Clark and Alan Tang. Do or die moment here, Parg, up against the two eights. And I guess an ace would be the big ticket for Alan. He could nearly triple up. Well, Patrick wouldn't say no to a queen he either. He would not say no to a queen. Eight on the flop. That's absolute disaster. Patty Clark and Allen basically drawing dead when the first flop came out. The queen on the uh, river. Queen, the queen of the material. river. That would have won the pot for, for Patrick if the, if the eight hadn't come. So Patrick could have tripled up and got back into it. Instead, he's walking. Patrick, that was extremely unfortunate. Um, you were actually Porrick's favorite player to take home uh, the prize this evening. How does it feel as a professional player to have a result like that? Uh, yeah, still, still disappointed at this moment in time. I think I maybe could have got away from it, but I don't know. And it was the first, second hand, was yeah, it? Yeah, the very second hand, so I was, and he was just after losing the hand before it. So I thought maybe he's a wee bit steam and he could be a wee bit lighter and it's a draw heavy board. It's hard to fold a set at any stage, but uh, especially on the final table. And a lot of us were actually looking forward. You're quite an aggressive player as it is anyway, so we were looking forward to seeing what you had to offer, so it is. Yeah, um, it's cut short, so don't get to see anything tonight. <laughs> well, look, you made it to the final table, so at least, you know, you have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, happy and enough. Will we see you again next year? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Always, always come back to the fits. So, Alan, that was unfortunate to um, bust out that earlier on in the evening. Can you tell me what happened in the last hand? Oh, yeah, um, Patrick went all in, uh, I think, just under the gun or something like that. And then I was in the middle of it and uh, the other guy's pull, I just called 179 all in and uh, Seamus on went all in after he gave it a thought. So after he went all in, I didn't even think, <laughs> I just went all in. So I only had about half the chips left. So I have ace jack, I just called and uh, Seamus show pocket eights. And uh, well, he flopped a set, so I think that's the end of the story. Then. Yeah. Well, so, you yeah. had to play it. Yeah. I had to play because half my stacks are already out there already. So I just thought, well, I, I just thought maybe I would be lucky enough to hit the ace. That's it then. But I didn't. So it was unfortunate. It was. But yeah. hopefully we'll see you back next year. Yes, it will yeah. be. Yeah. It's a nice uh, tournament. I like it as well then. We're delighted with how the event has gone so far this year. It's the third year, and in fairness to all the, the staff in the poker department, they've done a great job yet again, Denise and Adam in particular. Uh, they've led the staff right through the last couple of days. Quite a gruelling time for them, and I'd like to thank them. They've done a great job. We have pretty much a, a very wide audience. Um, it's, it's basically people from every walk of life. Um, I think at the final table, there's pros and, you know, 
regular people who hold down day jobs coming in to play and uh, it's great for us to see you know your your club member who's here for recreational purposes rubbing shoulders with pros who've played in the World Series or international events so it's a, it's a great opportunity for them. That's it for part one of the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Stay with us for more action after the break. Welcome back to the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Let's get straight back to the action. 29-year-old Colm Chan, one of seven players left in this tournament. Park, he's a secondary school teacher from Kildare. Yeah, you'd wonder are the kids rooting for him to win or to get knocked out. <laughs> what? I know when I was in school, which way out of the I think his pet peeve is uh, no unnecessary talking at the table. And at the back of the class. <laughs> <laughs> Under the gun for Nick, who now has a lot of chips to play with after the last hand. How, how long have to the break? Call. Yeah. Queen Jack offsuit. He'll come flying in. This tournament park has got a lot of history. Now, this is the 12th year, I think, of the Fitzwilliam Championship. This is now becoming one of the oldest regular tournaments in Ireland on the schedule. Call. Well, that should, that should kill it off. <laughs> A lot of these guys part of this good community of poker here. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a fantastic... Yeah. I mean, the atmosphere around this oh. is brilliant because, I mean, it gives the club players a chance without having to uh, no mortgage the house to play oh. big-time poker on TV and against the top Irish pros. <laughs> this pot now four ways. A limp from Nick started off four in. And, geez, look at that flop for Pablo. Bottom pair. Not flush draw. In Spain, I think they call that worth driving over a cliff for. I think and in Spain, a lot of things are worth driving over a cliff for. <laughs> Pablo has shoved straight all in. Well, you can't really blame him. 341,000, uh, about the size of the pot. Quickly called by Nick with top pair. And top pair is not even a favorite in this hand. Yeah, Pablo's 52%, and Nick is 48%. It's kind of like Brexit time here. But he still needs help, Parag. Still needs help to stay in. It's got to be a deuce. It's got to be a diamond. It's got to be an ace. That's not it. Two pair now for Nick. Ay, caramba, Pablo. He's eliminated. I think he's a, a nurse in a nursing home in Dublin. I think he might need a little bit of treatment after that. Ah, he smiles still. He knows he did everything right. Great finish. He'll get a payday. And look at that chip count. Three at the top, three at the bottom. Nick stacking. Pablo walking. Well, he looks a happy man, doesn't he? I'm here with Pablo, who just finished up in seventh place. Pablo, tell me about the last hand. Uh, very disappointing. Good flop for me. I have bottom pair and flash draw and one over. So the pot is big enough. According to my stack, I just go all in. A guy called me with top pair and I miss everything. It's just one of those things. Yeah, very disappointing. <laughs> well, you played really well and you made it to the final table. So we'll be seeing you back next year, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Winning. Fantastic. He's a happy guy right now, I would say, Nick. Well, in fairness, that's his normal demeanor. I've played quite a lot of uh, pot limit Omar with him, which is uh, his game of choice in the club, but he's always got a big smile on his face. And I believe he's in this particular tournament here, Park, uh, off a of party poker satellite. 75,000. Couple hooks there for the chip leader, Seamus. It's kind of easy to play poker when you get the jacks all the time, although, they do say jacks are the hardest hand to play in Nolan Holden. Well, I don't mind giving them a spin every now and again. <laughs> Neither does Seamus. Ronan, though, our quantity surveyor from Galway, has come flying in on the button. And you can't blame him, Park. Queen Jack suited. He's only got about 12 bigs. Yeah. But he's in bad shape. Oh, he's not in bad shape anymore. Lady, hit the flop for you, son. Uh, Galway, of course, a real hotbed of poker in Ireland. The Eglinton Club down there has uh, 
but oh, just yeah. somebody, a lot somebody. of champions, Derek Murray, Fintan Gavin, and of course, Jude Ainsworth, who won the party poker event in Galway seven or eight years ago uh, at the start of the year when uh, we were doing the comedy. I mean, what a tournament that was. I'll never forget that. Keith McFadden from Galway, of course, at the final table, that as well. But Jude Idiot, really he hit quads against Mike Sexton. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> One of the massive talents in uh, in Irish poker that exploded out of the knots and made this game big in this country, I think. They seem to think it was something to do with the water in Galway. <laughs> I never drank water in Galway. I drank just about everything else. That was one of the great tournaments. It used to be around this time as well. I'd say the Fitz has... has uh, has taken over the mantle of this uh, this holiday period, having the big tournament. It used schedule. to be the first week in January. Yeah. Great fun, I mean, first week in January, Galway, the party capital of Ireland. Oh, my God. Well, we've seen a uh, double up from Ron, and, and now here it looks like Colm is gotten all in from the big blind to the button raise with the King-10 suited, and that's pretty understandable. It's a flip here for Colm's life. Not anymore. Not anymore is right. Jess received sets all He could do it a nine. Place. A nine would give him the straight. That's about the only five. thing that would give him anything right well, now. Well, a five, five would give him a split pot. <laughs> He's it's, grasping at straws. Well, he did absolutely nothing wrong. Back to class, back of the class, Colin, but he'll have a payday. So, Colm, that was really unfortunate. It seemed as though you were struggling a little bit for the last half hour or so. Tell me what happened there. Uh, I was just blinding away. Um, got King-10 suited in the big blind. He shoved on. Well, he opened. I just reshoved. So, kind of played itself. And you were kind of waiting for the nine for the straight, but... I five for a split, but what can you do? But you played really well, and yeah. you're at the final table, so that's a great achievement in itself. So, will we see you back next year to... I hope so. Try and take tickets. it. <laughs> we'll have satellites going. Perfect. Well, look, it was great to talk to you and well done. Right, thank you. Thanks Cheers. very much. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to play the Fitzwilliam main event, we've asked some of our players to share their experiences with us. So let's go and see what they have to say. The Fitzwilliam Festival has a great mix of local players who are here six nights a week, but the buy-in is sufficient to attract uh, some of the the big professionals from Ireland. So you get that kind of cool mix of recreational and professional players, uh, you know, going to war, doing battle, and uh, it creates a great atmosphere in the club. Everyone is excited about the tournament, and um, yeah, it's a really special event, I think. What's fascinating at the moment is the last three probably represent a reasonable demographic of the Fitzwilliam Club. What you've got is you've got a top pro in Seamus, you've got a Chinese a significant gambler in Nick, and you got a taxi driver, so I think that's <laughs> that's actually about a, a fair a fair representation of the clientele here. Um, well, I didn't last very long this year, uh, unfortunately for me. But uh, I mean, it's another good festival, but it fits. They always get good numbers. They always put on a good show. One, two, three, four, five players left here at the Fitzwilliam Club in Dublin, and. One of them is going to win 25,000 euros. Could it be Nick? Oh. Perhaps Ronan? Well, I think the smart money would be on Seamus. Uh, he's the guy with the pedigree. He's uh, won hundreds of thousands of dollars in tournaments. These guys haven't, nice. none of them has won 10,000. But poker's a great leveler. Sometimes being the best player doesn't mean you win. Seamus has got the chip lead, and he's facing a raise on the button with the pocket oh. fours. Oh. This is one of the few times, Park, we've seen him call a raise rather than stick the three bet in. I think that's probably because Nick is behind him with uh, with 2.8 million. He doesn't want to uh, walk himself into any trouble there. You know, you'd think at this stage that this tournament would, would be Seamus's to lose, so he's got to be extra careful. You know, the sure. burden of favoritism and all of that. This is one of those pots where nobody's got too much. I mean, Stephen opened it up for the raise, is he going to follow through with what they call the C-bet? That's what they do in Ireland, anyway. They call it automatic in these parts, Park. Yeah. Bet 
Let's say that the second bang is considered obligatory if you put the first bang in pre-flop. It's like the symbol after the drum. Exactly. And this is a uh, this is decision time here for Seamus. Well, I just I just toss and <laughs> let the coin decide. No, seriously, Seamus has been playing uh, with Stephen for a few days now, so he'll know that it's unlikely that nice. Stephen has a six, unless he has two of them, in Great which case he'd probably have checked anyway. So he just stuck a raise in. That's oh. real. I mean, it's, he's bluffing with the best hand, Park, but that's pretty subtle play. It certainly is. I mean, he could even get Stephen off an over pair here because it's Seamus is quite entitled to have a six here, whereas uh, Stephen really isn't. This is sometimes these little moves. You win a pot when you could have lost one, and it's impossible to see Stephen oh, continuing no. here. Listen. That's how you right go on. deep. That's how you win a tournament. That's how you overcome the pitfalls of luck. Making the the right move at the right time. Me and Seamus with most of the chips. You can see, I mean, Ronan and Stefan at the bottom of the chip count. Stefan hasn't exactly been moving or grooving the Frenchman, Parg, but he's still in this, apparently. No, it's it's very strange to see a Frenchman there without making noise. <laughs> I think in, in French they call this the le, le cloak. I think he's in the finance business, I think. He's figured out his best chance of making money is hiding over there in the onesies <laughs> and hoping nobody notices <laughs> him. <laughs> <the dealer. laughs> it's not a bad tactic. Um, I mean, if everyone else keeps going out, you keep moving up the pay ladder. It is a... Mm. Uh, Allez les bleus. Right, in the big blind here. And it's running on the button. Jack ate a diamonds... That's enough, right? I'd imagine Stefan would uh, would kind of hoping maybe the dealer will forget about oh. him and he doesn't have to put out a blind. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. Nick making a decision there with the a six. He's coming and flop two sure. pair here. And a flush off for Ronan. It could be fireworks here. I would say. Is that check, check? <coughs> Both playing cagey, full house, and Ronan's made his flush. Oh, that's ugly. You can't blame Ronan for checking back. Or even Ronan. Ronan the Barbarian. <laughs> Race 265. Poor Ronan drawing dead. You hit your flush on the turn. It's been checked on the flop. And it is very deceptive because of the check on the flop. Uh, Ronan is going to not really going to suspect that he's, that he's walked into a full house here. I think uh, in terms of quantity surveying, Ronan will eventually realize he has too much to fold and yet not enough to win. Seven. Story of my oh. life. <laughs> Nick's trying to talk the chips in the pot. Can you win? You get a million. Is, sorry, has, is Nick actually slow playing this here, Park? Yeah. Is this what you would call a... Uh, yeah, his bet got raised and then had a big dwell up before. Uh, and he's just called. Uh -huh. I think just to make Ronan absolutely sure that uh, his flush is good. That looks like a good card for Ronan because it's not a fourth diamond. <laughs> oh, poor Ronan. So if, Ronan can he, uh, if Ronan can get out of this, he should be in a circus. I think uh, Nick is doing what the fishermen call uh, getting the hook That's deeper good, in. Okay. And, uh, he looks like he's got a hook in his mouth. <laughs> ah, this is a bit unfortunate for Ronan. There, there is no but way he no. can fold his flush here. Oh, he just wants to see it, it, but he knows. Shut up, please. House. Oh, yeah. 
that if Nick has what he's representing, and he does, the flush is no good. And you don't see that too often, Park. A uh, bad beat like that. Well, a flush against the full house after the after they both checked the flop. And uh, they Nick, fooled each other nicely. He's uh, doing true quantity surveying there. He noticed his pockets are empty on the way out the door. So, Ronan, you just finished up in fifth place, which is an incredible achievement considering there was 223 runners initially um, in the tournament. And um, you did go up against Nick in the final hand. Did you do that because he seemed to be bluffing quite a bit towards the end? Um, he did, yeah. Well, we played a few hands against each other and I was raising my buttons with hands that I should be raising them with and he, he kind of thought I, I was bluffing a bit going into the hand maybe. And uh, so I jack eight of diamonds, flopped them down ace high with two diamonds and he checked and I checked also because I kind of wanted to just disguise the strength of my hand a bit if I did hit it. And the turn came a diamond but it also paired the board. So he, he bet and I, I re-raised it, raised it. So I had about a pot size bet back and um, then the turn came a blank and he he made a small bet and I over, overshoved and, and he called obviously. I think Jack High Dime flush there is probably too strong, strong of a hand in my position to be holding, you know, so it's cooler, it happens. But you're happy enough with how everything went overall, I'm guessing? Fifth is, is great. Yeah, it is. I, I, I'm happy because coming into the final table, starting the day I only had um, 11 big blinds, so if you asked me to start of the day, fifth, would you take it? I'd say yeah, you know, so <laughs> happy enough. Well, thanks a million, and we'll see you again next year. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yes, yeah that's definitely. great. Thanks a million. Thanks. That's it for part two of the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Stay with us for more action after the break. Welcome back to the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Tensions are really running high, so let's get straight back to the action at the final table. Big money and the trophy still up top. Four left and Parg, the pressure. I know you like to call these final tables like tumbler dryers. Cycle up. Yeah, and I'd say the guy under most pressure uh, at the moment is Stephen. And uh, the reason for that is um, Stephen is the club player who plays tournaments here several times a week. Uh, Seamus and Nick uh, mainly play cash, pot limit, Omaha. Uh, they're not all that bothered about it, but for Stephen, this would be huge. It's bigger for him than anybody else, and that makes it harder. And he's got a huge decision here. He's been dancing, but now Stefan has moved all in from the small blind, the button open, and Stephen looking at two sixes. This could just be a fold here, Park. It's a decision anyway. He could also try and isolate and get Nick out of the way. This is a really tough decision. Yeah, it's 765,000. You know, if it was 365,000, it's an it's a insta-call. It's probably an insta-call for Seamus. Yeah. But Stefan hasn't been very active, so uh, the He's last thing... He's to worry about Nick behind him as well. Yeah, but the last thing you, you'd be expecting here is Stefan to be as weak as Queen-10. Stefan showing that you don't need to be too active to get respect. Or in fact, you probably get more respect if you're less active. Yeah, that's in a, fact, that's what I was saying, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephen thinking to himself, "Hey, Nick, if I had known you were gonna fold, I might have just called." Uh, Nick couldn't even call the re-raise there. We've seen this. You see this a lot of times, Park. A guy like Stefan, if he can step up his pace now, he has actually all he needs to win this tournament. That's all very well in theory, Jesse. He has stepped up the pace, but he's just got the timing wrong. <laughs> he ran into the two jacks. Nick is not going to lay it down this time. He's still only a two-to-one shot. <clears throat> you know how uh, I think it was Dan Harrington who once said, well, if you can't beat him before the flop, you just have to dog him. <laughs> it's not like Dan tried all that hard to dog too many people. No. I think that was just an advertising campaign. Started out well with the nine on the flop. But he's gone out guns blazing, Parg. I mean, Napoleon had his Waterloo. And, and Stefan had his ace nine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stefan, you just finished up in fourth place. You were quiet for the best part of the evening, but then you went all in four or five times in the last 20 minutes or so. Was that deliberate to hang back? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there was um, a very clear ICM position uh, throughout the tournament because there were lots of very small stacks. And the big stacks understood that and were bullying the small stacks. So if you had a small stack, you had to be reasonably quiet to try and survive and navigate through this. And I had a medium stack, so I was quite of an advantage versus the small stacks. I just had to wait for them to go bust. And I played a few hands. I had like ace 10 three times in the first um, hour. And each time I didn't hit and then someone's trying to bully me and I, and I have nothing on the flop and it's quite difficult to respond when you have a medium stack. You've got someone who's got a very large stack and is intent on bullying you because of the ICM position. So I had to play it that way. Scene set nicely for these final three warriors. And mm -hmm. Park, I, it, you have to feel like the crowd is behind Steven here. As you said, this would be a huge moment in his poker career. He's up against guys he knows, but probably only spies in the cash oh. games on a Friday evening. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure the, the, the club regulars would be behind Stephen. Right, right. I, I am. I mean, I think this is fantastic. I mean, we're playing the Fitzwilliam Championship, and we got three guys that play here several times a week fighting it out. I mean, it's it's a victory for the... It's going to be a hometown victory one way or the other. I can't help but hope that Stephen oh. uh, gets a bit lucky here. and Because uh, I, I want to see him crying with the trophy. Yeah, Seamus trying to get a cheap flop there with the old 3-7 suited. Nick said, no way, pay to play, and that hand is over. Went to showdown. Tell you what, these guys are pretty evenly matched stack-wise. Seamus, of course, slightly ahead of the other two. And a and a long way ahead mm -hmm. of, of Stephen, but really apart from that, they're very Well, apart from that, matched. they're totally even. Yeah. Three-handed play, Park, much different from a ring game. You cannot sit around. Yeah, th 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 this is where you, you, you win with the hearts, not with the cards. And ace is a fairly big card three ways. Ace, so one twenty five. the biggest card, obviously. <laughs> Five. When did you figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> Little raise on the button. And Nick, he's been playing these kind of hands. Cool. He's a he's a tough guy to play against. You, you, you have to make some hands against Nick, don't you? Yeah, well, the, the guy hold him is in Nick's game of choice. So if Nick isn't entirely sure what he's doing, uh, how can anybody else get a read on him? Oh, my but gosh. It, oh, dear. Oh, dear. What a setup! Check. It's a straight flush draw for Sheamus. It's top pair in a flush draw for Nick. Steven's got yeah. the up and down. There could be carnage here, Well, they could all get their money in. They both checked to Sheamus. There's no way he's checking. And what is Nick going to do? Nick yeah. might just go all okay. in. Call. It's a bit of a conservative line from Nick. I'll tell you what. Calling that 200,000, Parg. It could be the only thing that's keeping this tournament alive. S Steven now. And it's letting Steven in with the open ender. Raise all in. He's going all in. I love that move. He's, yep. This is not, I would say this, unlikely to work out well for him, Park, but he's decided rather than call, he's going to give the other guys an opportunity to get out of the way. Yeah, rightly so. Shame is kind of nothing. Um, it's hard to know, that, to know that Nick has a hand as strong as he has, so... Uh, Good move by Stephen, and you know he's he's allowed to hit it straight. Not only that, I would say if Stephen gets, he'd rather be heads up against Sheamus than heads up against Nick. He'd rather be heads up than three handed. Then we'll have more outs if he can get this pot two ways. I think he'd rather be one handed. <laughs> He's got a six high. He'd rather it be one handed. There's no way Sheamus is going to fold the ace five of diamonds here, Park. His question right now is does he move in and risk Nick having something big, right? Call. Call. Does he decide to just call? 150. Come on, guys. Show it. Show what you're made of. There's a case to be made for Nick moving all in here. I would say so. 
with his top pair in the flush draw. And Parikh, I mean, so the dynamics here, of course, so vital. Nick has to be thinking, if I go I all in, fold. he could just sit out and try and move up. Oh my pick. God, he folded. He folded. That, that's a that's a that's a pay scale move, isn't it? Yeah. He's trying to move up the ladder. He knows mm -hmm. that if Steven knocks Steven that if Sheamus knocks Steven out, Nick gets paid <clears throat> either way. And now he's sitting there looking, and he's knowing. Nick is knowing he could have won the whole thing. Right. Steven's out. I call, I win. Yeah. No call, I definitely call. Nick could have won the whole yeah, tournament six, there, and, right and there. there and I mean, then. The yeah. What a I, hand! I, 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 but and look, Steven's done nothing I wrong, Park. He's gone out the no absolutely yeah. perfect yeah. way yeah. trying to win this tournament. Yeah, he's put his heart and soul into it. Good luck to him. Steven, well done. Second runner-up at this year's festival. I, I can imagine you're feeling a little bit disappointed at the moment, but you kept in there. You were short-stacked for quite a while and you just kept coming back and back. How do you feel? Uh, disappointed, obviously, but um, I did try my best. Um, I was very short at one stage. I managed to get it back up to over a million, so it's just very difficult having Seamus on the left-hand side of you, uh, piling on the pressure constantly, so I'm happy enough to finish third, to be honest. Well, we all think you did fantastically well. And how did you think about the tournament overall this year? I thought it was fantastic. Great structure. Um, I'm definitely playing again next year. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, for the win. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so Thank much, you so and much. well done. Thank you. And now we're down to our final two, competing for the title and the €25,000 in cash. Let's see how the cards fell. 36-year-old Nick. This would be, Parg, if he can overcome Seamus Kyle, his biggest <laughs> poker <laughs> cash. It already is. Yes. <clears throat> Not only if, you don't mind, if you don't mind me saying oh. so. <laughs> oh, look. They've brought the cash on the table. That's 25,000 cool, crisp, rubber-banded bills. All different colors. And uh, Nick has made a top pair out of position. What would your strategy be if you're Seamus Cahill here? He's got all the laurels. He knows he's got the experience. It's pretty simple in that uh, Seamus is by far the most experienced player. And uh, this isn't a game that uh, Nick plays much anyway, so uh, Seamus' strategy should sure. be to sure. keep the pot small and to win all the pots where nobody has anything. What about uh, making the nuts on the turn? Conversely, Nick should be trying to make the pots as big as possible and get a bit of gamble into it because that's his best shot. I mean, his best shot is a puncher's chance. If it comes down to settling this on points, Seamus will win. And if it comes down to making the nuts on the turn, Against, oh wait, as he, he actually, what an incredible fold that was by Nick. He just folded top pair, heads up to Seamus's bet. That was sublime. I can't believe that. But this is probably because he's a pot limit Omaha player and they, they see more um, <coughs> uh, ghosts under the bed than, than most people. You know, if you used to play in Omaha, you keep thinking nuts and uh, that you're up against bigger hands. So to make the adjustment oh. to hold them is... Uh, a little tricky. Place, and in oh. terms of going the oh. opposite way, it was Nick calling on the button here. And Seamus says, let's just pop it up with the jack high. He's making the pots bigger, out of position. Well, that's a nice flop for the jack, Dan. Makes a fool out of me, doesn't it? I think we've seen this quite often, Parg, you know, when you're at a final table and you've been playing aggressive, when you get the heads up, it's really tough to reassess and slow things down. Yeah, it's like uh, this time last year, we had um, Sean Prenderville and uh, David O'Kelly, where they, um, Sean said afterwards that he made the pots too big, that he should have been chipping away at David O'Kelly. And David O'Kelly said he knew that, so he just changed gear and started bluffing himself. That's that we just saw. V-Pip, voluntary put into pot. Both of these players over 65%. It just shows that the two players left at this final table have been two of the most aggressive, or at least participatory, in this tournament. Pfft, that's a great word. <laughs> I'm betting the French geezers, uh, VPIP or whatever you call it, wasn't all that high. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm betting that if Sheamus keeps hitting full houses, straights, and up and down draws, that he is going to have no trouble winning here. Nick is amazingly hanging on. <laughs> I don't believe it. This Nick is thrown away a top pair in the flush draw. He's thrown away a pair of aces, and now he's called with queen eights. Queen eights with two nines and two sevens on the board. Nine. Well done. Certainly his own strategy. Of course, now that was one of only two cards that could uh, beat him okay. there, but still. He must be getting a little bit frustrated, okay. Mark. Sometimes you just say, I want to see what the guy's got. And, uh... That's about five k yesterday. Makes sense. He's very good structure. Mm -hmm. Very good structure. <laughs> Seamus is liking the it way this is It certainly looks that, I mean, like, Seamus was always favored to win this heads up, but he's also yes. getting the, getting the cards. And I would say if Nick calls did here, you, this would be under the heading of, I am frustrated, oh. Parg, and you can't blame him. When your head's up, sometimes you just have to make something happen. Yeah, normally what happens is you get knocked out. Another flop for Seamus. Jeez, he's hitting everything. Check. He's falling head first into Clover. And if Nick, Nick tries to, to make something happen shot. here, he could check raise. Call. Call. Well, I think Nick thinks that Seamus has been robbing him blind, so he's uh, he's making a stand. Check. It was kind of a bit of a bluff call. <laughs> Not strongly I, I, recommended. I, I, I think it's what <laughs> in the textbooks. What, what someone what, what what they what they call sometimes an aggressive call, and uh, unfortunately, even though you call something an aggressive call, it's still just the call. Exactly. Well, if Nick wants to encourage he himself, really Park, he may only have twenty five uh, percent of the chips in play, uh, but he's still only two hands away from victory. The double double. Yeah. Two alls. If he wins two alls, all ends in a row, he's the champion. That's what they call the Bing Bang. And uh, as you mentioned, Seamus just wants to grind this out. He's hitting cards. He's hitting flops. He must be feeling like the end is nigh. Right. Seamus has got the experience to close this out. Nick has picked up the Jack Eight of Hearts, which heads up as a quite a nice hand. The raise on the button. So ace ten for Seamus. He may decide to put the hammer down here, Parg. Yep. And it's to be fair, fun. Nick might take him on. I think he will. I've seen Feder Hulse do this in the Bahamas a few weeks ago at the party mm -hmm. poker event. It was exactly this hand, I think. If it's good enough for him, it should be good enough for Nick. Well, it's only 60-40, and this would put the stacks nearly level. That's a clear flop, Parg. Help for Nick needed. Uh-oh, 10's no good. Nick's gonna be out unless he hooks his way out of here. It's over! Wow, just a kind of spectacular finish. Two pair, we have a champion in Seamus Cahill, worthy winner, Park. Absolutely, Jesse. Seamus came in with chip leader and the favorite, the guy with all the experience, but you still have to get the job done. You gotta make the moves, you gotta make the raises, you have to hold your nerve and Seamus Cahill, a worthy winner of this party poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Nick, thank you for talking to us. You're the first runner up at this year's main event. How do you feel? I feel very happy and uh, I'm very enjoying the game. And is this your first time going heads up against somebody in a big tournament like this on camera? The first time. The first time. You, so you're very lucky. Yeah. I'm very lucky. And it, can you tell us a little bit about what happened at the last time? Oh, yeah. Uh, because Seamus always is professional. You know, I think I can't win him, but I try. I do my best. But anyway, I'm second. I'm very happy. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for talking to us. And you'll be back next year? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> That's Thank great. You. After four long days of play and many ups and downs, we finally have our 2018 Main Event Champion. Here to present the winner's trophy is Paul Howard, the Head of Marketing at the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club. 
Seamus, on behalf of everyone at the Fitz, well done. You played a great game. Seamus, congratulations. The main event winner 2018. How are you feeling? Um, absolutely uh, delighted. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of tired. We've been playing for three years or three days. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, no, absolutely delighted. I've been coming to the Fitz here for about 10 or 12 years, entered a countless number of tournaments, and uh, delighted to finally finish one off. Take, take one first home. Place. Yeah. First place, I know it's going to take home for sure. And we have to ask, what are you going to do with the prize money? 25,000 euro. Yeah, well, uh, in, two, in two weeks' time, there's a European Poker Tour on in Prague, and uh, they've uh, two Omaha tournaments I'm interested in playing, and I love Omaha. and. Um, I'm going to try and, uh, you know, try, uh, try and win one of those. <laughs> That's great. And we're going to see you back next year to defend your title. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you. Well, that's it from all of us here at the 2018 Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Congratulations to our main event winner, Seamus Cahill. From myself, Kate Casson, our commentators, Porrick Parkinson and Jesse May, and all the team here at the Fitzwilliam Casino and Car Club, thank you for watching and we'll see you all again next year.